All right, I'm going to play my uh, pin chest. We're going to do some T6 here and see if we can get some of the uh, holes that we're looking for for the Coast to Coast Tournament. See if we can uh, play eight and get eight putts. Not epic fail. LSU. My best friend is an LSU grad or went to school at LSU. I'm always surprised that Louisiana actually has colleges. <laughs> That's just a ribbing to my buddy. I'm going to go right towards that rough. Hit great. Great to the right, which is better than great to the left. See if I can get up in front of those shadows. You can get up in front of those shadows and it opens the opens the mouth up so you can get to the hole just a little teeny bit better. Let's see if my opponent can get up there with the white ball. The thing I don't like about hitting shots straight forward like that when you're doing max overpower is if you hit it great to the left or the right, it's going to go great to the left or the right, and there's nothing stopping it. <clears throat> if you have movement on your ball, you've got a little bit of curl, a little bit of side spin. You can get the ball to go in the direction that you want. Let's see, where am I at? I'm right at max club. See if I can eke my way up there. That second bounce is super close. Super. One six. I'm gonna add on 10%, so that's gonna be about one eight. Gives me about a ring and a third into power. That's about a ring. Isn't it perfect? In the hole. <clears throat> Eagle. Get in the hole. This is not the easiest par for to get a get an eagle on, but it is eagleable. I find the farther you can get in front of those shadows, the more you can open that up so that you're coming at it where you're not having to engage, especially if you've got a ball that has more side spin on it. Where you can curl it around and you can stay the heck away from that rough that's down there. I don't have it happen to me as much now as when I first started playing when we got really low level clubs, but it's one of those areas that it lends itself to wanting you to pinch up against that rough. And anything great to the right is going to end up in big, big trouble. And anybody who's played on this hole and ended up in that rough where it rolls down and gets in that sand, it is, it's a crap shot from down there. All right, let's see if they'll play again. Let's see if we can get one of the holes we're actually looking for. We will go back through the whole deal. Let's get one rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. There's going to be, there's so many players playing down in Tour 6 right now that uh, I like it. The competition down here is really good right now. There's a lot of people playing. I'm finding a lot of people that want to uh, replay because people do want to practice and we're, we're getting people that want to replay and and actually go out and have some fun. All right. I'm going straight down that, that chute. There's just no two ways around it. My opponent's got a quasar and an apocalypse. Not exactly sure where, oh yeah, I guess they're hitting over to that other 
that other pad over there. So they've relegated themselves to on and three. There is an eagle shot from down here, but it is super difficult from the angle that you're coming in. Let's see if we can get this done. I'm going to bring a quasar just because my opponent brought one. Bring out the biggest ball that I can. Let's see here. I really would like to play it with this. Go right at that line. Take the wind out. Two, four, six, seven. I'm not sure what this will do because it has a little bit more curl on it than that extra mile. I have, I should have tons of room on the right. So just trying to uh, roll it down there as far as we can. Trying to get it in tournament play. If we bring a big ball here, we can get to like 450, 460, somewhere in that neighborhood. So being at 390 is not uh we really want to get all the way down towards the end. It'll be very difficult, even with a big dog from here. I don't know. I don't know that I can get up from there. If you want to play this in one-on-one -on -one and get up there, a Titan will, will get it done. And depending on how the wind's blowing on the second shot, sometimes you can get it done with a Marlin, but... Uh, you got to be able to make it over to this area right here. And man, that's going to be super difficult. Super. I'll try that straightforward shot. That'll end me up in the sand for sure. For sure. I can tell you as bad as that sand shot's gonna be, this shot right here is super difficult. But every single time I get on this hole, I do that max or power hook shot because for, for starters, I always wanna make sure that I have that shot in my bag. I don't want to ever forget where that mark is. There's a lot of these max hour power hook shots on these holes. I forget where I'm supposed to go just because I don't play those holes very often. But this particular hole right here, I never want to forget where that spot's at. There are several of these really old holes. <clears throat> that looks like it's pretty good. Getting them up there. See if I can get it in with my Spitfire. See what kind of spot, what kind of shot we got here. Wins is going to be a, just a little bit of a factor. See if I can hit this perfect. Hit it perfect. I got a pretty good shot of that going in the hole. Oh, now we can just stay out of the sand <laughs> again. If you bring out a Titan, though, that's a uh, if you bring out a Titan in your secondary club as a big dog, you got a serious chance. In a tournament play, typically we play that with a power five ball and get way down in there. We just had this hole in a tournament not too long ago. And this is one of those holes that uh, eats a lot of people's lunch. They do not get the eagle on this hole. So if you can come out here, if this is in a tournament, you can come out here and get eagle on this hole. You're going to be ahead of a bunch of people. Just because you got the eagle. In the hole, birdie.
play them, it could be a little bit nicer to us and give us a little bit more uh, options for the holes that we're looking for. Maybe we'll pick up one of the par threes we're looking for here. We're looking for Juniper Point, hole two, City Park hole one, and Juniper Point hole seven. This is not one of them. There are so many different ways that you can go at this hole. You can go from where my opponent's at. You can go from the left-hand side and bring it around. If you've got the right win and the right clubs in your bag, you can do the backspin shot up here, either with a Guardian or with a Rocket, if you've got a Rocket in your bag. If your opponent epic fails, there is a rough bump that you can do up there with your on the right-hand side with your extra mile. and Usually, it's hard to kind of get on the green, but you can usually get really close. <laughs> very nice very nice nice shot nice shot nice shot man i'm gonna have my big dog which is not the ideal club to have here Somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, it's probably a little too much top spin. One nine, that's about a ring. Put some curl on it to bring it back over to the fairway or the green. And I hit it great on the inside. About 700 rings. A little too much top spin. In the hole. <laughs> Close. I probably should have, I, it felt like I needed to do like maybe one, one and a quarter top spin and you bring it around, but it's kind of a blind shot right there because of the ball guide. That is a way that you can get up there though. All right. We got a player. We got somebody who wants to replay just out here having fun, trying to get the tournament holes and finally find somebody who wants to replay. Rematching. Come on. We're looking for some City Park and Juniper Point Holes. City Park, hole seven, par four. We're looking for two, six, one, and five. Three, five, one, two, and six. This is not one of the holes that we're looking for. It's funny, sometimes when we're doing this stuff, you'll go like parts of the day and it's like, wow, we're getting all kinds of the holes we're looking for. And then there'll be other parts of the day where you're not getting any of the holes at all. We got three courses here. So we got 27 holes we're looking for nine of them. So you would think that like one out of three that we would get the holes that we're looking for. But we definitely, I think you definitely have a better shot of it when you're replaying because you're at least taking some holes out of contention. That will work. That duck, that dog will hunt. <laughs> That dog will hunt. Usually I play this with a really accurate club, trying to get down into this hole. Three, two, three point two rings. Trying to hit it nice and easy. Hitting it two rings great to the left. It's one of the benefits of using a 100% accurate club.
actually in tournament play, I've played this hole so many times with a big dog that I actually feel pretty comfortable playing this particular hole with a big dog. And I usually do not do the bounce over the sand and trying. I, what I like to do is come over here on the left hand side and try and bring it up to the cup so that I'm going up the hill to the cup instead of trying to engage the slope. See if my opponent can get it lined up. At this level, it's uh, 1.2 per ring, so a full ring set six. Look like that's going to be pretty close. Pretty close. Close. I like to come up up in this area right here. <clears throat> I like to come up to the cup. So I'm engaging less of that hill. 6-3. There's 5-6-3. Oh. Roll it up to it. The good thing about rolling on that flat is it'll roll back down. The thing I like about coming up the hill at it is, is it'll go straight up the hill. And gravity's typically not uh, affecting the ball, but when you're hitting up on the hillside here, the ball's wanting to go to the left and it'll drift off to the left. And by shooting it on the side that I was shooting it on there, I take that sand completely out of play. I'm not a big fan of, of putting traps into play. And that's the same thing in real golf. I mean, there's times when you're out on the on the course. For those of you that play golf in the real world, you you know how it works. There's there's times where you're like, yeah, I can be over I can be over on the left hand side, and I've got uh, got a little bit shorter distance to the cup, but you've got a sand trap in the way. So now you've got to get it right to get over the sand trap to get up to the hole. Five, five. I'm going to do at least a 10% pull. So I'm going to do a six ring pull. There's five. There's six. Oh, I cannot hit perfect anymore. I've lost my, lost my ability to hit perfect. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Need to focus more. I'm just like popping the shot off and not really paying attention to it. I need to really focus on the on the needle. Try and get my timing. Trying to get my timing right. My timing sucks right now. And that's really bad because if you go out on these tournaments or on these courses and you shoot the minimum score, it's going to put you typically, if you shoot the minimum score, you're, you're still looking at a top 50, depending on your bracket, depending on your bracket, it could be a top 15. You pick up one shot and all of a sudden you're looking at a serious top 15, maybe a top 10, depending on bracket. But the difference between being in the top 15, top 10, and being up there in the top three looking for a banner is just a few holes picking that stuff up. And you really have to hit perfect going into the cup. 
if you're not on a perfect track or you're not in perfect, it's really difficult to work yourself up there. City Park Hole 2. This is one of the ones we're looking for. City Park Hole 2. This is going to be hole number eight. I'm going to see if I can get my trajectory right. Normally, I, I and, and I'll probably do this in the tournament as I'm just laying up here in this area right here. I just want to really be right here in the middle of this fairway area. I don't need to push the limit to get too far forward. If you have a rock, a maxed out rock, you can do the shot that I'm doing right here and it'll end you up there very nicely every time very consistent and from where they're at right there they'll easily be able to get up with a if they have a nirvana in their bag i want to use a <clears throat> in the tournament i'm definitely going to be using a titan but i'm going to use <sighs> I use a katana. So off of this fairway, this rough area right here, I want to be three rings off of that transitional surface. And it really only takes about one and a half top spin. 1.5 rings. If you're using a quarterback here, you're going to be five to six off of that, just depending on the level of your QB. Hitting it perfect. I'm just trying to bleed it out there into that center area. If I put all the topspin on it, I could run that through. It's one of those things that if you hit it perfect, you're right down the center. But because of the narrowness up there, if you hit it great to the left or the right, you could end up clipping that rough. And you'll be all right if you've got a big... rough iron but if you've got lower developed rough irons where they're still on their short they're still pretty much short irons you may be in a spot of bother Let's see if they can get up there hitting it perfect Let's see if we can get this in the hole my max there's mid min so we're at about mid club So we're at mid club, so it's about one three. There's three nine. I go about two and two third rings. Trying to hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. Just a bit outside, as Bob Euchre would say. And if you that are major league fans or the, the movie major league, just a bit of, how can they lay off pitches like that? <laughs> I haven't been winning many, but at least I'm uh, forcing sheet out. So we're uh, getting to see some holes. The whole goal is to uh, do your pin chest in eight matches and not uh, not get smoked out there on the course and end up having to play more than eight in order to get your pin chest. That hole is going to, that's the thing about this particular, these coast to coast city park, the city park holes that are in this coast to coast tournament are going to eat a lot of people's lunch. There's going to be a lot of people that epic fail on them. So this is one of those deals where you've got some opportunities. J 
just by playing the minimum score where it'll put you pretty good in the bracket. There's five, six, seven, eight. Maybe just a little more. Let's see if we can hit this perfect. Hitting it perfect. Way off. I did a standard pull there. I probably, where it was at, probably takes a 10, 10% or more. I really like to play this particular hole with a Saturn because with a Saturn you can get, there's a spot on that little ridge that I was writing. You can be way up there in the front on that ridge with backspin. It seems like the last few times we've had this hole in a tournament that they gave us, they gave us headwind. So we probably will be shooting against a headwind here. Games game. Good luck. That was three losses in a row. Awesome. Let's see if we can kick up one of the holes. Come on. City Park, hole three, par five. Is this one of the ones we're looking for? City Park. Hole three, this is one of the ones we're looking for. This is hole number three. There's the wind blowing here, seven one. So ideally, in the tournament, this is a great hole to play with a power five ball. I'm gonna play it with a Titan. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with a Titan and I'm gonna do the max overpower hook shot, trying to remember where the spot is out here. This max overpower hook shot, it's a reverse hook, and it's very hard to make the fairway on the other side using the hook, but I find that they, the shot, the second shot from down there at the bottom is not, not a bad, uh, you're actually in a better spot. I'm going to go blue ring off of that transitional line. I was doing this the other day, two, four, six, and there's about five, six. Maybe. I think I got most of it. Ah. Oh. Just barely clipped it. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to remember the spot out there where I was at. So I went the other day, I was, I went my clear ring off and my clear ring, or excuse me, not my clear ring, but my white ring off and it was too far to the right. So I went, so I went in two rings, blue ring off of that transition and that's too far to the left. So I think clear ring off will put me right dead center in the middle. I don't remember how to shoot that max over power hook shot. That is close. Very close. No messing around. If you get into a spot like this, don't mess around with it. Just lay yourself up. Put yourself dead center in the middle of the fairway. I'm actually going to move it over just a bit. Minutes two, four, five. I want to be right in the middle of that fairway. If I hit it three rings good to the left or the right, I still want to make sure that I'm right here in the middle of the fairway. There's no reason if you end up in a spot, don't press the limit. You have other clubs in your bag. Get back into your top four clubs. From right here, we'll be in long iron or wood range. The ideal way to do it if you're going up there in three is to get where my opponent's at so that you can bring your short iron. 
and there is a backboard here, but I've never really been a fan of using the backboard. That grate to the right actually helped them. Maybe a little bit closer than they would have if they'd hit it perfect. Let's see what kind of side spin we can get on this. I'm gonna to have to engage the hill just because, because. Six three. There's five six three. And hit it perfect. Hit it perfect. And a little bit of laggy. A little laggy. I'm just curious if the if like your opponent's connection's bad, if you're getting lag sometimes because of your opponent's connection. Because there's times where I can't figure out why I'm getting any lag because I'm sitting here looking at the I'm super close to my I'm not I'm running off wireless and I'm super close to my my router. Got another device here and I'm looking at my bars and I'm I'm super solid and yet I'm getting lag. So I'm not sure if that's because my opponent's connection is not strong. And you can play one person and you're getting lag and you play another person and you're not getting lag. And this is not one of the holes that we're looking for. Okay, I demoed the shot from over on this side with the big dog. My opponent's going to do it with a sniper. It'll be a little bit easier with a sniper. You got better ball guide. That wind blows. Where they're at right there, man, they are going to be, if they hit that great to the right, they're going to end up in the sand. Hit it perfect. They're still going to be close to the sand. Let's see how close that is. Bam, in the sand. That should have been nine rings, and they were only about six rings off of that sand. So now, normally, what I do when I'm in a situation like this is I would hit it into the sand right here. This is my normal MO. If you're playing one on one and you want to uh in your winning chess, this is your this is the MO as you would just hit it into the sand right there. I'll do the same shot my opponent did. Let's see if I can demo it just a little better. There's five, six, seven, eight. Put some curl on to bring it back to the cup. Just rolling it over there. When I first started playing and I first got to uh, tour six and this hole, that is the way that I played it because at that point I had a hammerhead three, and that was the that was the best way of coming at it. So I've taken that shot quite a few times, quite a few. But normally in one-on-one -on -one play, if you're out there and you're trying to get chess and your opponent epic fails like that, I I mean, put the hammer down on them. I mean, throw down. Just hitting the sand in front of them. <laughs> I know that sounds cheesy and that's a D-bag type of thing to do, but when you're out there and you're playing, especially if you're playing the upper tours and you're, you've got big money on the line, when you're playing T7 and below, you know, the chump chains that you're having to put up to play. It's not, you know, I'm just out here playing and having fun. All right, hitting over to that island is super easy. Super. Super easy. I'm trying to get way out there. 
trying to get into my long arm range actually. 1.5, it's about three quarters of a ring. Trying to hit it nice and easy. Hit it one ring great to the right. Trying to get it out there into your long iron range. 394. Hey, you. Let's check our opponent out. 421 million won. Last tournament they played in pro. <laughs> played in a lot of tournaments. Not sure if this is a practice count for him, and they haven't made uh, haven't made some, or if they uh, just didn't make the tournaments. Hitting it perfect. Hitting over to that island, one hundred percent accurate driver, wood or, or QB or rock. You can do it with any ball. It's a wood shot coming into the cup. So I got plenty of room here on my club. So I want to dial it up to the hole. Three seven. I'm gonna do three seven. I'm gonna do a four. I'm gonna do three seven. Getting it perfect. Let's see if we can get it in the cup. <laughs> Took a little irregular bounce right there at that very last bounce. Close, close. Let's see if my opponent can get it in the hole. The thing about that wood shot from over there is you're coming up that hill, that side hill, and it's uh it's hard to stay on on trajectory when you're going up there. It's gonna drift just a little bit right at right at the very end of the run. It's not that you can't get Albi from over there, it's just this hole doesn't lend itself no matter which side you're on, but I think the side, the shot from the area that I came in, you got a little bit better. A little bit better to look at it to get Albi. Grabbing something to drink. In the hole. Eagle. Dun, 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 Hopefully everybody's being safe out there. I know um, I live in the United States. I know there's a bunch of states that are opening up. The The deal is, is that it's a, uh, where he talks about that we're, or we're flattening out. And in some respects, yes, but what we're doing is we're still at 30,000 new cases a day, which equates out to about, 1,500 people a day are getting a, getting corona, and that's 1,500 people a day that are going to die. There's 30,000. 30,000. That's a huge number. I like coming at it from that side over there because you're engaging the flat down at the bottom and you can go straight towards the cup as opposed to engaging the hill. The hill, the little racetrack hill coming down. The other way you can do it is, is that you can start really low here on it where you're at the, you can see where the hillside 
terminates and you're on kind of a flat area and you can start really low and then bring it down to the cup and not engage the hill. The difficult part about hitting it from the top is, especially with headwind, is it'll lay it down quite a bit. But when you're on the bottom down there or up, up at the top, the way it's coming into the cup is it typically doesn't have to engage too much of that hill. That'll be very nice. That'll be very nice. Very nice. Nice shot. I think we got one more to go on our pin chest. I think. I think how much time we got. Eh, we might have. Maybe one more, maybe two more. Hey, you. Juniper Point, hole one, par four. Let's see, Juniper Point. This is not one of the holes that we're looking for. Good luck. Let's see which way my opponent's going. They're sticking with the white ball. Uh, did they change balls? No, they're still sticking with it. Maybe. Two, four, six. Not exactly sure which shot they're doing. It looks like they might be doing the hook. That'll be a nice trajectory. Very nice, very nice. It does not take all of the tops, man. Blue ring off. Seven four two four six seven. It's about three and a half rings. Max overpower hook. <laughs> Close. Very nice, very nice. This hole right here, it's amazing how many of these holes they've reconfigured, or they've gone back and they spent the time to reconfigure a hole. Some of the holes they've reconfigured, and I actually like how they played better to start off with. Not sure why they felt they needed to reconfigure them. There's a couple of the holes. There's one of the par fives I can think of that before, like even now, it's still a super hard par five to get an eagle on. But the old way, it was really hard <laughs> to get eagle. And they were like, yeah, we reconfigured this because people were saying that you couldn't get eagle on it, which was pretty much true. You could, but it was it was tough. The deal is, is that this Grizzly is not the club that I would typically bring to a lot of these par threes that we're playing in this tour. It doesn't have, it doesn't have all the stuff that I'm normally looking for. Jeez. Two nine, and nah, we'll just shoot it. It doesn't matter. 
we'll end up in the rough right behind it. Or the fringe right behind it. If it seems like when I'm out here playing one on one that I really don't care, I really don't care. I'm really, it's all about tournaments for me. So when we're out here proxying these holes, uh, I'm usually pretty nonchalant about it. I'm really focused on just trying to uh, get the tournament holes. And what you'll find is, is you'll catch the, one of these par threes, you were on a hole, and then you get into the par three, and it's one of the ones that's in the tournament. This is why I always say on in Mondays, practice round. When we're in tournament week, it's all about picking the right club and balls for the hole. Because when you get to these par threes, you got a third of the tournament holes that you really haven't been able to pick the right stuff to get to that hole. Good game. Good game. I might have time for one more, so let's see if they want to rematch one more time. We'll, we'll have some bonus action here. What's up, Buster? What's up with you, man? I think you guys are getting bonus content here. Hey, what are you barking about? What are you barking about? Yeah? You got food over there? You got toys? You got all kinds of stuff. What are you barking about? Southern Pines, hole three, par five. This is not one of the holes that we're looking for, but I'm going to go for it this time. I'm going to bring out a bigger ball. Let's see what my opponent brings out. I'm going to stick with the white ball. Yeah, they changed it to a Marlin. What? What? And they're doing a max overpower hook from that side. I've never done the max overpower hook from that side over there, so I don't know where the setup is. For that. What? What? Hold on, we got one more hole to play. The audience is expecting one more hole, buddy. What are you barking about? What are you barking about? Let's see how much distance they can get from that side. <laughs> 416, that was good distance. I'm gonna mark Got an extra mile. All right, all right, all right, I'll play it. I'll be nice and play with what my opponent's playing with. You got one ring off into there. I'm going to come a little bit more. I'm going to leave that wind in. And I'm going to come out just a little bit more. Caught it all. Let's see if that was a, see if leaving that wind in put me right up against that edge right there. That's the distance we're looking for. 475. Now I've got a sniper as my secondary club. I'd rather be on this side right here than on the side that I'm on because I like to come in from the right hand side. And so it'll be a little bit more difficult. The shot's easier. The shot is easier if you can get way down in here. It's actually, the, in my opinion, the best club to have as a guardian because your raw distance is the same as a big as a big dog. And if you're down in that deep, you got better ball guide. And typically, you're going to engage a little bit of backspin. And so my opponents put themselves in a very nice spot. Very nice. Very nice spot for the eagle. You can do a bump and try and get over, but I think this side right here lends itself a little bit more. Four eight. It's about a full ring set. I'm gonna put a little bit of curl. Oh, and I hit it great on the inside.
We both got nice little chips for Eagle with Marlins. Two different ways to go at it. This hole's been out for so long. It's a, one of the original holes in the game. There's got to be a ton of video out there on it, and I'm still amazed at how many people go to the left on the drive and relegate themselves to uh, three shots to get on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's what happens when you use a skewer. Come on, dude. I know you got a firefly. Now you got a rapier. Okay, from this distance, wind. Wind's gonna play a little bit of a factor, but not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it's only gonna play half as much as it would. I'm gonna hedge my bets a little. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, wind did play a factor. It's a good thing I hit it great to the left. <laughs> Two rings. <laughs> Good game. I won one. What do you know? I think I played eight games and I won two. Look at that. Good luck. Good luck. Each time we got on the video, we're just about. Look at that. Oh, I won three. Three out of eight. Three out of eight ain't bad. <laughs> All right, that was a, uh, uh, we got a few, I got a few of the tournament holes, but not many. Just a little bit of tour six play. Just having a little bit of fun. So hopefully everybody, uh, hopefully everybody out there is going to be uh, safe. I, like I said earlier in the video, I know that there's a lot of states that are opening up this weekend. Everybody, please be safe while you're out there. It's, it's really, when we look at our numbers in the U.S. and it's, and it's touted that it's flattening out. Unfortunately, it's flattening out at 30,000 a day. So when we take that, that equates out to about 12 to 1,500 of those people every day are going to die. So we're still in the 1,500 a day, every day, roughly on the average. We went up 210,000 people last week. Um, some states are lowering down. Some states are going up. I find it uh, not funny, but I find it interesting that like a state like Michigan, who protested last week, their numbers went up this 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 last week. Their percentage numbers went up. So it's really important to uh, continue to be vigilant about it. Um, I know that it is it is flattening, but it's not. Uh, we're it flattened out at a very high number, so we're still getting a lot of new cases every day. And we're not seeing a super big dip in that. Friday, for whatever reason, is like the big day. Like that's the big reporting day. Or I don't know if it's just all the tests come in on Friday. In Oregon, uh, my wife was tested. She had a, just a cold, but they did test her and it took five days to get the results. So I'm not sure what the response time is in all of the other states. As far as like when you get tested, how long it takes to get the results. But um, just stay safe out there. If you can, stay at home. And we can get past all this. All right. Thanks for watching.